Hey game developers, Bilal from Zenfinity.net and welcome to another Unity tutorial. In this video we're going to learn how to click on objects to interact with them using raycasts, which are just lines that detect collisions in a direction. Now, just download the project files up here in the top right, or from the description below, and let's get clicking. Alright, before we begin, make sure you keep these objectives in mind so that you get something out of this video. For the first one, I want you to be able to click on objects, and I want you to know how to be able to interact with those clicked objects, like creating scripts to do something with them. And I want you to understand why it is that we're using raycasts. Basically, we're going to be clicking from our cursor and launching a raycast from that point and into the world to see if we hit something whenever we click the mouse. So here in this video, you're going to see the ball bouncing here whenever we click. That's what we're going to be programming today, but first we'll start with a script on how to print the name just to make things more simple, and then we'll expand upon it to do that. So let's get coding. Okay game developers, welcome to the editor. Now the first thing that I want to do is create a script that will actually print the name of our object, and then we'll transform that script into a script that will launch our ball upward every time we click it. So let's go ahead and create a new folder here called scripts. I'll enter this folder and right click again and hit create, and then click C sharp script. And I'll name this our object clicker script. Go ahead and double click on that script to open up the IDE and I'll drag it over here. Okay, right now we need a function that will print the name of our object and we also need to be checking for our mouse click inside of the update function. So to begin, let's go ahead and create a private void update and then let's also create a private void print name that will take a game object uh, we'll call it go. And so all we have to do in here is type print go.name. All right, now in update, this is where we're going to write our more complex code, but it's not too difficult. Basically, we need code that will turn a point into a ray from the direction of the camera and then forward from the camera. So to do that, we'll first store a raycast hit, and we'll call this hit. And we'll just declare that for now, and it's not what we're going to be worrying about at the moment. What we care about right now is this ray that we want to create. So I'll write ray ray equals camera dot main dot screen point to ray input dot mouse position. And oh, and yeah, so so this is you know not exactly one hundred percent clear for a beginner, but what this is doing is turning a screen point into a ray as the name says but the details of that ray are that this is a ray from the camera into the mouse's position towards where the camera is facing so basically if our camera is looking if we check in unity at this ball then if I were to click from this cursor here it should shoot a ray from the cursor and toward the ball on this 3d axis here okay so let's go ahead and write the rest of this code. We need to check if a raycast along that ray is actually going to get us a hit or not. So let's do if physics dot raycast uh, along this ray, and we type out hit here, as in we want to send information into a variable without returning it. And so out will store information from this raycast into this raycast hit here. And now we want to type 100 F. And that's just the distance how far the ray will actually go before it will stop. And 100 should be sufficient for our needs for now. Okay, so now what we want to check is if hit dot transform. So we're just checking if it exists with this check. We can also write if hit.transform is not equal to null, if we want to make this more clear. And then in here we can just write print name of hit.transform.gameObject. And bear with me as this is technically a performance hindrance, but it's not a big deal right now as this is a very simple project. Okay, so now let's go ahead and attach this to our any, any object actually. And let's see uh, if we can print the name of this ball here, which is called the player. 
So I'll go ahead and attach this to the main camera for now as we don't have any empty that we need to worry about. And I'll hit play. Now what this is doing is constantly checking under the cursor. So it's constantly printing ground. Now, but what if we want to change this to be a click rather than just constantly do this? And to do that, we can just do a simple input check here. So we check if input dot get mouse button down. And what that means is that the mouse is clicked once, hence the word down. And so we'll put a zero in here for left mouse button. Okay, and I'll go ahead and close this off down here. So now every time we click, we'll do all this. So let's go back into Unity, hit play. And my console will clear itself, so I'll click the player here and it says player. I'll click the ground here and it says ground. So that's working just fine. But now what if we want to do something more interesting and knock our player up or something like that? So let's hit uh, play to end that again and we'll go back into Visual Studio here. And let's create a private void launch into air. And we'll send a rigid body rig. Oh. And in here we'll type rig.addForce rig dot uh, transform dot up. And let me go ahead and create a variable here for our speed. So public float, I'll call this force actually. And I'll start out with something like five and we'll see how that works and then we can edit it in the inspector. So every time we click we're going to want to um, add force in up times force. Okay. Now instead of printing our name here we need to do something like checking where if we have a rigid body. So if we have um, well if hit dot get component that transform dot get component rigid body so if we have a rigid body, and I'll actually over here store a private, oh, oh, not private, sorry, <laughs> just a rigid body RB. So if RB equals, and what this will do is just assign this as well as perform the check. So RB will equal whatever this returns, and we'll also be able to check at the same time of doing that if uh, this is null or not. So if this is null, RB will be null, but if it's not, then RB will be a rigid body. So we'll just do RB, oh, we can actually do launch into air, RB. Okay, this way we don't launch our ground, or we don't attempt to launch our ground's rigid body, for example, even though the ground does not have a rigid body. So here we'll also call print name. Actually, we can just go ahead and bring this down, just to see what it is that we're launching in the air. Okay, now let's go ahead and go back into the editor and let's hit play and see if our ball launches into the air. And it appears that it doesn't. So let's go ahead and see what we missed out on here. So first I'll hit, I'll put a 20 into force just in case. Oh, and actually what I did realize was we don't want to use the default um, acceleration here. So why don't we do force mode dot impulse so that we can launch this thing once rather than attempt to add um, constant force. So let's make sure that our player has a rigid body and it does. And it looks like all these settings are correct. So let's hit play. And our ball does get launched into the air. Now he's coming back down. So that looks about right. Let's go ahead and adjust the force back down to 10 and click him again. And if I were to click him several times, he would go even higher up. Okay, it looks like that's all working correctly, and that's going to be it for this tutorial. If it helped you out, make sure to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more tutorials like this and learn Unity. If you want to go ahead and accelerate the speed at which you create your first game, we actually have a couple resources. The first one up here is a free ebook on all the tools that you need to create your first game. You just click that, card up there and I'll send you it right away. And the second one here is actually a free sample from our course that is currently 90% off. So you can go ahead and check that out. It's a video on how to create spaceship controls. So with all that said, I'll see you in the next video and have a good one.